I'm going to show you how to add numbers with up to three digits. So today we are going to look at adding 265 add 163. So those are my two numbers and at the moment I do not know what my answer is. So the best way of starting this with your children is to use a place value grid. Okay so the place value grid is where I split the numbers, I partition those numbers up into ones, tens and hundreds. So I've got my ones here, my tens and my hundreds. Okay. So, and you can use a place value grid with absolutely anything. So we would start the children off with using lots of different manipulatives, lots of concrete apparatus. So basically that would be things like counters, um, you could use paper clips, you can use pasta shapes, you can use absolutely anything to help your children with it. Um, and they would partition the number up. Now you can also draw shapes as well. So if you've got a little whiteboard like me, you can draw shapes in. I would avoid using um, a zero um, as a counter shape because it will con confuse the children because it does look like a zero. Okay, so I know you're thinking you're just drawing a circle, but it does look like a zero and it will confuse the children. So I would stick with either doing a diagonal line, a triangle or a square, anything like that. It's totally up to you. Okay, so I'm going to use triangles today. So uh, because we're adding, I can do these numbers, I can draw these numbers either way around, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to actually draw 163 first. So I've got 100, so I'm going to put my 100 in. And then I've got 60, so that's six tens. And then I've got three ones. It's really important that you always get your children to double check. So I've got 163, 100, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 63. Okay. Always double check to make sure that they match. Because lots of children will make mistakes just at that first hurdle there. Okay. Is that I might put 162 or they might have 153. So it's really important to always double check. Now I've done that number, I'm going to write in my next number. So I've got 265. So I need 260, that's six tens. Five. Brilliant, okay. So I've drawn both my numbers. Now I can actually start adding. So when we add using a place value grid, we always start with the smallest column. So it's not always the ones column because when we go on to working with different types of numbers like decimal numbers, for example, then um, the smallest column would actually be potentially your decimal columns. So it's always the smallest column. Okay, so we're gonna start in the smallest column. For this calculation, it is actually in my ones. I'm gonna add up the shapes that I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. I've got eight in there. That's absolutely fine. I can put eight down. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to my next column. I'm going to add these up. So I've got six in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Add this six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I can't have two digits in one column. Okay. I can have nine, but I can't have twelve. So what I need to do is I need to move some of those into my hundreds. I need to do my exchanging. Now I know that 10 tens is the same as 100. Okay, so 10 lots of 10 is the same as 100. Okay, so I'm going to take 10. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's going to go into this side and become 100. So those have moved now and they've become 100. Okay. And I count what's left. So I have two left 
in that column. And then finally we go on to my hundreds column and I count all together what I've got there. One, two, three, four. So there you go. So now I know what my answer is. So 265 add 163 is actually 428. Okay. So we've started with the place value column and we've used counters or any other type of concrete resource or we've drawn it in okay and physically moved the shapes where we've needed to exchange now when your children are ready we would then go on to a more formal written method and we can still use the place value headers so i can still use my hundreds tens and one header but this time we would write the number out so i would have 163 add that 265 and it's really important that those columns line up otherwise our calculation is going to be wrong because we'll be adding up the wrong numbers together so again I start with the smallest column okay so that's my ones in this case 3 add 5 is 8 6 add 6 is 12. I can't have two digits in there. Some children would actually write it down like that. Okay, but I'm not allowed that. That's going to give me the wrong answer at the end. It's going to give me a four digit answer where I know my answer is a three digit. So if I imagine that 12, I'm going to write down the smallest number first. So 6 add 6 is 12. The smallest number is 2. That's going to go there and we're going to exchange those there we're going to take that that's that 10 tens we're going to take it over and make it a 100 we're going to put it under here okay so there's my 12 I've just exchanged it okay and now I can add my hundreds so one add two is three plus this one down here which is really important is four okay and you'll need to check with your children because sometimes they forget to add this one on Okay, so you can see here that my answers match up. Now, if the children aren't ready to move on to just the formal written method on its own, then sometimes we might have them using the place value grid and completing the formal method at the same time so they can see how it links. Okay, now the other way that children might be shown this calculation is purely written as a number sentence. So they might have... 265 add 163 is what okay so if they're doing a test um, or an activity where the teacher has purely written out those questions very quickly they'll see it like this now there are some children who think when they see it like this that they they just work it out mentally they do it in their head and actually that's not the case okay it's written like this purely for ease um, the children can still work it out using any method that they want to. So if they're really confident with their mental arithmetic, they could work it out in their head. But when it comes to three digit numbers, then it might be best to either use your place value gauge grid or your formal written method. Um, so I would be encouraging children to work it out carefully to double check their answers. If they have done it mentally, brilliant, but then use a written method to very quickly just double check that they're right. The other way that the children might see the calculation written is in a part whole model, which might look like this. So you would have your number, one of the numbers on one side, the other number on the other and then it would have a bracket with a question mark and that would basically tell the children that these two parts need to make a whole the bracket is showing the whole what is the whole so to get the whole we would add those two sides up 